Hey, what's up, guys? This is Ben from Neck Deep, and you are watching Ambi. Hey, everyone. It's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to my interview with Ben from Neck Deep. What's up? How are you? Welcome back. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, tour's going well. Um, yeah. Couldn't be happier. Can't that's that's me. Yeah. As long as the shows are going well, we're playing well. Crowds are good. I'm happy. Like I'm easily pleased. And so. you've got new music to be excited about. The Peace and the Panic is officially out there, so yep. must be feeling pretty good about that as well. Yeah, playing a lot of new stuff for the first time um, on this side of the pond. So um, and yeah, it's all going down super, super, super well. So very happy we didn't write a flop of an album, <laughs> which is always good. Which is every band's biggest concern is that people like whether or not people will like their new record and. Yeah, thankfully we wrote a record that people like. So. More on the peace side than the panic side, then. Yes, on that yeah. on that side of things, yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah. We've been sending out some really great tour tweets from this tour, and I would love to hear a bit more about some of them. Okay. So the first one is: "There is only room for one kind of blunt in our lives," and you actually posted a photograph of Mr. James Blunt. <laughs> what was that about? Um, probably just funny, just trying to be <laughs> funny, trying to trying to be you know trying to come up with some original content, mm -hmm. trying to post some OC, but. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. That was literally all that is. Most all of the stuff, that OC. most of it, most of the stuff that we post on Twitter is like either me or my brother just posting memes, basically, or trying to be funny. But it's yeah, I sometimes got a laugh out of it, it works. good. All right, yeah. okay, yeah, Doing cool. Something right? Yeah, exactly. You got to let people know that you know that we're we're very blunt, blunt friendly, but only of the James kind, you know, because <laughs> the best kind of blunt. There you go. The other tweet that I have is. The internet is not a me seeks box. No one has the answers despite everyone screaming, look at me. So did that have to kind of do with recording the new record um, in LA or where did that come from? No, that was just purely me just having just weird thoughts. Just okay. thinking about like, just thinking about weird little metaphors and analogies mm. for stuff. And I'm a big Rick and Morty fan. So yeah. it was kind of like, you know, um, if, if you don't watch Rick and Morty, there's an episode with the me seeks box where it, this little blue character like pops out of the box and he'll do one thing for you and he'll help you with one thing. But um, Jerry, who is uh, Morty's dad, ends up like way overcomplicating the <laughs> thing and they basically end up wanting to kill Jerry. Um, and yeah, I just thought that, yeah, people treat the internet like it's a, like it's a me six box. Like they're just looking to the internet for all the answers and it's like, you're never going to get it like from a bunch of people that you don't know who are probably going to give you bad advice or, who are just gonna, yeah, eventually end up probably just hating you or just being pissed off at you or whatever. Like, yeah, I just don't think that Twitter or like social media is necessarily the best place to look for advice. Mm -hmm. Ask people that you actually know, or like maybe you go to like, I don't know, to form your own kind of opinions yeah. on things. Take was, it from somebody that either means something to you or... Yeah, rather than just like, oh, you know, screaming into the void that is the internet, hoping that someone is gonna help you out. But f more often than not, people are just kind of in that world for themselves are only yeah. really going to kind of giving you a, a very biased answer. Or, you know, sometimes the advice is just really bad advice. Like it's just not necessarily so going to help you in any way, shape <laughs> or form. It's not going to help you in any way, shape or form. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's kind of all that was. I just see a ton of it online. Just like, wow, my problems. Nui. <laughs> is that coffee tea? Coming what, through what with the coffee. What kind of delivery do we have here? Um, it is a, a small latte with an extra shot. Okay. So there you go. I'm a, yeah, I, I'm a big coffee guy. Is that going to keep you going for the night? Um, probably, yeah. I had a lot of ramen earlier. And I was feeling kind of tired off the food. I was in a bit of a food coma, so I needed the caffeine rush. And it's probably going to make me feel sick, but who cares? Who cares? <laughs> I'll be awake, so. Can you perform on a full stomach? Because I know some people can. Some are just like, no way. No, I, I used to like never, ever eat before shows. And it was really bad. I like genuinely would come back from tours like so much skinnier. And uh, my mom and my girlfriend were just like, you're really skinny now. And it kind of just, I don't know. I think it was just this weird tweak that I got into my head of like, no, I can't eat before a show because it'll just make me feel gross on stage. But if you give yourself enough time or you eat the right thing, I wouldn't go eating like a full pizza like an hour before a show. Um, but like if you give yourself plenty of time and you eat something kind of healthy, then generally it's probably better for you to do that than to be on an empty stomach. I realize like it gives you way more energy. Like being on stage and just being all lethargic because you're hungry is... Not, not the best way to put on a good show. You want to put on a good show for people. So it's just finding that balance, you know. As I mentioned before, you are playing tracks off of the new record. And I really did think that tweet went hand in hand with you recording in Los Angeles. Because apparently you didn't think that people were going to be as superficial as they were over there. Oh, yeah. 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 LA was definitely... LA's cool. Like, I like LA for for a lot of reasons. But I dislike LA for quite a, f 
for, for, for a few reasons, you know. There's a, a lot of stuff to, to do there, you know. It's got a great culture. You know, you're never bored there. Um, you know, the height of, like, art and fashion and music, is it's, it's all there. But what comes with that is, yeah, superficial assholes. And, like, people who will literally meet you and be like, oh, so how many followers do you have on Instagram? Fuck off. Literally, immediately, that is a, we are not compatible yeah. people. I don't want to speak to you. If you're judging me based off my Instagram, like, Something presence, my social here. media presence, or you're even judging yourself based off your social media and presence, like, like people will, like, get this such a heightened, like, inflated view of themselves based off, like, a number. And it's like, shut up. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Like, are you a good person? Are you an interesting person? You know, do we have anything in common? That's all I really care about. Like, don't start a conversation with how many Instagram followers do you have? Because that's a guaranteed way for me to just turn around and never speak to you again. Yeah, yeah. And that just kind of sucked. And like, I don't know, like sometimes even if they're not like fishing for social media, it's just kind of like just the shit that people say and talk about just cringes me. Like, I come from a small town where people are pretty as, as real as it gets, you know. And like, if anything, that's where I'm from, they'd probably look down on you for being like rich and famous. People would like want to knock you down a peg if you get what I mean. It's like one of those. Um, and so I think it's kind of that maybe that mentality of just like, I don't want to be rich and famous and I don't want to spend a bunch of time with rich and famous people. Some rich and famous people, awesome. A lot of them <laughs> suck. And I just have no, like, I don't know. I just have no connection to that world, really. It just doesn't, doesn't appeal to me. doesn't bother me. Um, yeah, so it's whatever. And that, it was just that side of LA that I just didn't, I didn't like. How did you deal with that or react when somebody's initial question was, how many followers do you have? Did you kind of just brush it off and walk away? Um, I would just laugh and be like, okay. are you serious? I'd be like, I don't, I, I would probably be real with them and just be like, I don't care. Like, yeah. I'm not, I, and I would probably just try and get out of the conversation quite quickly yeah, mm -hmm. and go and find someone that I do know and talk about, I don't know, football or Star Wars or something like that. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Those are some of the go-tos? Um... I don't know, whatever. Just something that's more interesting than Instagram followers, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My favorite track off of the record release is Motion Sickness because for me, I lost my grandmother a couple of years back and I went through that same thing that's in the song where you kind of hear the voice and you're trying to get over it and it, it just keeps coming back to you and it's really hard to go through, you know, it's yeah. a tough time. So for you, was it more therapeutic writing about that kind of stuff? For sure. Yeah, um, yeah like obviously I lost my dad like a year before, uh, no, nah, not a year before the record, like about, well, it was just over a year ago now. Um, but like a couple months before we wrote the record and you know that happened and I was like well shit I know what I'm gonna be writing about you know I know where I'm gonna be coming from on this record and absolutely yeah it was therapeutic like I had some real like moment of clarity moments on this tour on a uh, uh, during the writing and recording of that record where I like really dug deep into myself and like you know realized a lot about who I was and where I came from and like you know, these weird traits of my personality, like where I would get them from. And yeah, and just like, you know, shit in my life that I want to fix and make better and how I want to be a better person. Like I had these real like moment of clarity moments there. And I think a lot of that just comes from being so introspective, you know, thinking about the death of my father, thinking about how, like how, you know, how death affects your own life and how, death is such a big part of life and you know like how uh, where do we go when we go like the whole leaving the record on i just want to get one up on life before it kills me because you know coming to this very swift realization that um one day we're all gonna die and there might be something after it or there might not but what really matters is to make the most of where you're at now and that was like a big moment for me to realize that kind of thing and like really come to terms with like death and loss and you know, we'd experienced so much of, you know, our fans telling us how our music helped them. But I think it was one of the first times that for ourselves, we were writing a lot this time, you know, um, life's not to get you. I remember sitting down and saying, like, I want to write a record that will stop people wanting to kill themselves or stop people self harming because I'd seen so much of that. But then this record was a lot more personal and we were definitely writing for ourselves. And but that in turn, I think, was very relatable for people, and they saw I just that. Just to say that. Yeah, people, people, you know, related to that because they could see that we were being honest and we were being truthful. And then, you know, everyone's experienced loss on some kind of level, whether it's a hamster or it's your parent, you know, or you know, a friend or a loved one. Like, everyone's going to experience it at some point. So it's something that everyone can relate to or will relate to at some point. And 
I think it's just a very profound thing that happened that is gonna happen to everyone. Uh, the loss of like a parent or a friend or something like that. And um, yeah, I just think it gave us a really good kind of basis for this record for us to like really open up and just be honest with our fans, be honest with ourselves. And like, yo, I've learned a lot about myself in the past year. And um, I think I let that out on the record. Absolutely, fans clearly appreciate it as well. Mm, definitely, um, you know, again, now, you know, we wrote Life's Not Out to Get You. And we helped our fans out of, you know, if they were struggling, you know, maybe gave them a little mantra to live by with Life's Not Out to Get You. And I still absolutely stick by it. But it was definitely, I think people appreciate it as being a bit more open and a bit more honest and maybe a bit more realistic in terms of like, hey, you know, things get tough sometimes. It can't always be, you know, roses and a positive outlook on life isn't always going to stop things like death happening you know like sometimes things like that just have to happen and it was that realization of like the good and the bad together and this whole balance of peace and panic and you know the good and the bad the yin yang and you know it's not an original teaching by any means you know people have been saying it for thousands of years but it's true you got to have to have the good you got to have the bad and i think that was just that was a realization that we came to on this record too and i think it's something that people can relate to you know and as long as you're reminding them that the good can still be there you know that you know, in the times when, when things are bad throughout the, the panic, the good stuff will come to you. You just got to kind of push on through it and, and maintain a, a positive outlook still. You know, it's still we still have that message of, of, you know, positivity. It's just a little bit more underlying now, I think, yeah. rather than like being like at the forefront of the message. It's more about being in balance with the good and the bad. Well, to celebrate the record's release, I created a game that I wanted to play called The Peace or The Panic. Oh, wow, okay. So, I'm going to say a word, and if you happen to like the word in the context, it's The Peace, and if you don't like the word, it's The Panic. Okay. All right. Tight. You ready? Yep. All right, roller coasters. Peace. Emojis? Hmm, peace. Tofu? Peace. People wearing black lipstick? Peace. <laughs> Magic? Mm, if it's the gathering, then peace. <laughs> <laughs> how about wrestling? Peace. Okay, how about lip piercings? Mm, peace, yeah, sure, if you want to get your lip pierced, yeah, peace, whatever. Okay, and then the last one, Batman. Because I know you've got a little... Panic. I'm not great you? about Batman, yeah, panic. Yeah, I'm not about... <laughs> but I'm, I'm mostly a pretty, like peace guy like yo if if you want to if you want to i wouldn't wear black lipstick but if you want to wear black lipstick that's fine if you want to pierce your lip that's fine but batman get in the bin that's not real <laughs> it's just, it's he's not a superhero he's just a rich guy and we all know how i feel about rich people so there you go <laughs> it all ties back yeah <laughs> yeah full circle well we got a pretty big piece there for wrestling and yeah. here on Ambi, I not only interview musicians like yourself, but we also interview wrestlers. Sick. So if you were to have a wrestling gimmick, what would you be like in the ring? Ooh. Oh. I, well, West, West, our guitarist West is definitely by far the biggest wrestling fan. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a side wrestling fan. I kind of keep up to date with it. I was an Attitude Era guy. But if my gimmick, what would my gimmick be? Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. I'd maybe be like... In the UK, we have, like, chavs and scallies. Like, that's a thing. Like, guys in, like, shell suits. And, okay. like, you know, from, like, kind of poorer areas, stereotypically, that is, you know, from, like, rougher areas. And it's definitely, like, a northwest thing. Or at least it's still a northwest thing. So where we're from, you still get these these characters. And I'll just be one of them because they're pretty tough. They're pretty rowdy. They like a, they like a scrap. They like a fight. So I'd maybe be, like, some sort of, like, refined chav type type guy like and plus i get to wear like track suits and stuff so it's kind of okay. like sporty kind of look you know i could maybe get away with like i don't know some kind of like spandex type get up i don't know i'd Wait. probably be i'd probably be like some sort of scally chav thing though yeah then you just get in the ring and tear shit up that's the, yeah that's pretty the much plan. yeah 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 that would be easy but yeah i don't know i'd probably get torn up to be fair because um, yeah, I'm not much of a I'm not much of a fighter. That's probably why I like wrestling because it's fake. <laughs> so I'm like, oh okay, no one's getting hurt. Okay. Sometimes. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, for the most part. No scrappiness though. You don't think you'd be able to. Um, may maybe, maybe. I mean, you know, I if I if now these days I'm not much like I I will just try and avoid all conflict at any cost ever. Um, but yeah, back in the day, you know, I was you know. 
I'm from a working class town. People love a scrap. That's probably all my town is really known for is like <laughs> drinking, fighting, smoking, and yeah, just being gross and just being crass. So I would just embody that character probably. And um, yeah, but I'd have no like real finesse or flair or anything like that. It would just be pure scrappy. It would just be me being okay. like, probably kind of, I'd definitely be heel. I'd definitely be throwing a couple okay, low blows. Oh, I know, I know. I'd heel, be heel. Baby face, he got, he has I'd be heel. I'd be heel if any. I would definitely be heel. I'd be okay. going in with the low blows. I'd probably be like, yeah, I'd have some underhand tactics for sure. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the. That's the method of the chav is definitely <laughs> under underhanded tactics and just being scrappy and just being being rough. Yeah, that would be my whole vibe, I think. I yeah. feel like all we need is the gear and you're ready to go. So this is pretty yeah. well thought out for what, like a minute and a half? Yeah, you for a minute and a half. It. Yeah, like straight on the spot, that was good. I'm sure West probably has thought about his all day, every day. So he could probably give you a comprehensive answer. He's probably like actually thought it out. He's probably done little sketches of like the outfits and everything. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, off the top of my head, I'd probably go for that. But we'll see. I'd probably have to sit down with Vince and he'd probably refine it for me. He'd be like, no, we don't know. We don't like that. And he'd probably just give me <laughs> something to to wear or whatever. So I don't know. We'll see. I'd just like to uh, to be in the ring. I'd like to just walk down the ring. That would probably be all I do. That's I'd maybe be one. I, the yeah, just that would be it. That would be okay. it. And then I'd just get out of there. I'd probably get slammed straight away. Get slammed. I'd be the guy in the rumble who just goes out straight away. I'd be fine with it. I'd be like the horn swoggle yeah, of the world. The I'm just like kind of like a gimmick character. Yeah, because I don't actually want to spend the rest of my career getting slammed on my neck and my head and my back and everything. I'd rather just be the comedy character for a bit. That'd okay. be That'd be fun. How about if you could have any band play you out? Because, I mean, you're, you're even thinking about running this by your boss, Vince. I mean, Yeah, um, I don't know. When Motorhead played uh, Triple H, and that was sick. I remember watching that as a kid and thought that was really cool. Um, kind of any band. Again, it has to go with the character, though. So True. I need to think. And, like, Chavs generally listen to, like, really, really terrible, like, dance music. So I'd maybe go for, like, Avicii or something. Maybe, like, <laughs> someone like Avicii would, like, play me in. Even though he wouldn't actually be touching anything. He'd right. just be like, play Button. There you go. I would just, like, have a feature with Avicii. Yeah, why not? Very just, wicked. Yeah. I'll have to see how this is going next time we uh, meet up for an interview. Yeah, yeah, maybe I would have refined it a little bit more. We'll maybe see. I would have like got a gimmick. I would have maybe practiced some of my mic skills. And, and have a finisher have name. Out. We'll see where it goes. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'd have to think. I think I could probably come up with a decent finisher somewhere along the line. Or it might just be something really... It'd probably just be like a cheap shot of some sort, you know. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you on that one. I'll okay. get you there. I I'll refine that. this character and, and we'll get there. Perfect. Well, just to wrap things up, is there anything you would like to leave with all the fans will be viewing? Um, just thank you very much for checking this out. Thanks very much for checking Neck Deep out. If you like our music, then yeah, that's that's all I can ask for. Yeah, I don't want anything more. Just hope you like our music. Hope you come to a show. Enjoy yourself. And um, yeah, just keep smiling. Stay happy. Don't do anything crazy. <laughs> don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, just... Yeah, listen to the message uh, and take it in and hopefully it can help you out of a bad spot. And if it does, then that's the best thing we could uh, possibly hope to achieve. So, Big thumbs up. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. And remember to everybody viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See ya. See ya.